Celtic Park Football Club, which is just opposite this magnificent Emirates Arena. Of course, this Emirates Arena was built for the 2014 Commonwealth Games, but it's been used this year for the 23rd staging of the Total BWF World Championships. It is day three. We've already had some tremendous matches and some big upsets. We've got another six, six matches to come. We're starting with men's doubles and the reigning and two-time national champions from Scotland. Campbell and McHugh are up against the former All England and former European champions, Ivanov and Sozanov. Then we've got the world number one in the men's singles, Somwan Ho against Kraus of Hungary. Then it's uh, second men's singles and the current European champion, uh, the Englishman uh, Rajiv Usif. He's up against Samir Verma. Then uh, we've got women's singles and uh, Ritupana Dash of India is up against the poster girl of these world championships, the two-time silver medalist at the European Championships, Scotland's very own Kirsty Gilmore. After that, we've got the Olympic champions in the women's doubles, Matsutomo and Takahashi up against Chang and Yan from Chinese Taipei. Then we finish with another women's singles and Carolina Marin, the two-time defending champion, starts her campaign in a bid to make history as the first women's singles player ever to win three consecutive titles. She's up against Ip Pui Yin. But as far as the men's doubles is concerned, this is the bottom half of the draw. And as you can see, this is the top section and the winner of the match we are about to watch will face the All England champions, Gideon and Sukumolio of Indonesia. What an exciting Indonesian pair that is. But I watched their match earlier. They really did struggle in that encounter. So to this men's doubles, and what a moment for Patrick McHugh and uh, Martin Campbell Hello. up against the former European champions, Vladimir Ivanov and Ivan Sozanov. They are tall men, these two Russians, not only former European champions, uh, but also won the All England title last year. And if you're not familiar with badminton, the All England title is... Uh, to Bampton, what Wimbledon is to tennis, so it's a very, very big deal. On the black. The red. So our umpire for this one, Heidi Marat of Denmark, and the toss of the coin. Who is serving? You are? Yes. And who is receiving? Martin is receiving. Which side? And this one. Yes. So this arena, I'm sure, is one of the favourite places of most of the Scottish players because the Commonwealth Games and both these players played in the Commonwealth Games. Here's Martin Campbell and he's competing in his fifth World Championships. Born in Edinburgh, which is the capital of Scotland. They're just down from the career high world ranking. In fact, they've spent a total of three weeks as 53 in the world, but they are just down, as you can see. 25-year-old uh, Patrick McHugh, born in Fife in the east of Scotland, lives here in Glasgow now. It's his fourth world championship with his partner of today. They've never progressed beyond the last 32, which is what they did two years ago. Now, if you were with us yesterday, you will have thoroughly enjoyed that one against Jaco Arens and Ruben Jella of the Netherlands. Two straight games for the Scottish combination. And it was a tough match, but they looked very impressive. So to the number 10 seeds and Vladimir Ivanov turned 30 last month. Born in Chelyabinsk in the Ural Mountains and has the dubious reputation of being one of the most contaminated places on earth. His partner, the left-hander, Ivan Sozanov. He also had a birthday last month, turned 28, and he's from Stelosk. Ruptured his Achilles tendon in the semi-final of last year's European Championships, play. did Sozanov. As we look at our umpire, and did remarkably well to actually recover in time and play and reach the quarter-final of the Rio Olympic Games. Quite how he 
managed that feat. He was heavily strapped. They seemed to hobble about when uh, a match had finished, but it was a remarkable achievement to come back from such a severe injury. Well, with me once again, delighted to say Lars Ua, former head coach of the Denmark national team. And we were very impressed with McHugh and Campbell yesterday, but this, of course, Ladies is and gentlemen, a step higher up on my right, as far as Vladimir ability Ivanov, is concerned, Ivan their opponents Sosunov, today. Russia. And on my left, Patrick McHugh, Martin Campbell, Scotland. Vladivia Ivanov to serve to Martin Campbell. Lovo. Play. So this second round men's doubles encounter. That's a right-handed combination from Russia. And this man, the left-hander, is the man who ruptured his Achilles tendon in the semi-final of the 2016 European Championships. Well, he, I suspect, Lars, is going to be the man that tries to get forward on court as far as the Russians are concerned as much as possible. Yes, indeed. Uh, the Russians are very good at, at putting pressure and uh, and especially, as you say, Sosunov is, is very strong in, in the front court. Two, love. Can we change? Yes. Yes. That's a good serve. Service over. One, And two. what impressed me the most uh, by the Scottish pair yesterday was actually their ability in the service situation to take control and uh, of the first four shots of, of almost every rally against the Dutch pair. And they really need that again today because uh, that is also one of the strongest points of the Russian pair. Um, so that's an important battle in, in the beginning of, of every rally because they're not going to win this match, the Scottish, from, the, from their defence. They, they need to get the offence. Do they need to try and keep the rallies as short as they possibly can then, as far as total dominance, really go for it in the very early stages, the serve return, third shot, and, and just hope to uh, end the rally quickly from that build-up situation? Um, if they can, uh, that would be good, but, but I don't think they can because of the quality of, of the serves and returns from the Russian pair. So, so if, if they can get out Service of the fold, first four... Service over. Service fold. Three, yeah, two. Struck above the waist, says our service judge, Georgian John. Yeah, and when we see the, the slow motion pictures, he, he definitely uh, has a point there. Um, no, but it's, it's, it's very so hard it's at this level to Three. make points oh. in the first four uh, shots. So uh, as if, if the Scottish pair can get out of those first four shots, uh, being a little bit on top or even uh, just equal, actually, that will be, I think they'll be quite happy. Yeah. Um, four. Because um, Three. if they're not really focused and, and ready and sharp in, in the first four shots, then, then they will lose a lot of points there uh, against the the more experienced than higher-ranked Russians. Oh, yes, it's found the line. Save so over. Five, four. 
Now, Six. you see, that's the sort of Four. thing that doesn't bother me. You know, given what you've just said, I think he should be going for that. I know that he, he, he missed it, but I don't see the point in playing safe here. I think they have to go for every opportunity when it arises. They, they do, and, and because you, you can't hesitate uh, at all, because then they'll just be late on everything. So, yeah. so they have to go, and, and they have uh, prepared themselves watching a lot of video from, from the Russians. And the Russians are not... Uh, changing a lot of things, they they, they play uh, in the same pattern so all the time, but they just do it so well and with, with so much pressure that that it's uh, very hard to uh, to to put Seven up something seven. against it. Yeah, uh, but that's what they have to try five. to do. Such Five. long levers, such long arms. Vladimir Ivanov. I think it's going to be very, very difficult if you get embroiled in these flat, fast exchanges. Oh, that's well put away, isn't it? Nine. Five. Yeah, you're right. And, and um, it will be difficult for, for the Scottish players to, to get out of these flat uh, exchanges. So they, they will have to try to play soft block to the net or over. But he's also a tall guy. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, that's uh, that's another thing that's easier said than done. Yeah, he's, Ten, he's almost six foot seven. Five. He's a colossus of a man as far as badminton players are concerned. I think there's only Hans Colin that's taller than him on the world tour. Is that right? Yeah, you could be right. But his mobility is amazing, and and service over. Um, six. Yeah. Ten. I believe actually when when they uh, became European champions in, in 2014, he uh, extraordinarily also won a bronze in the men's singles in, in the same tournament. So yes, he certainly did. Um, Lost to Rajiv Usif in that semi-final. Exactly. And and um, not so many years ago, uh, so he, he played three events in the long. Super Series, which is uh, quite extraordinary as well. Yeah. Well, they've got off to a good start, the former European champions against the home favourites, McHugh and Campbell. Just six minutes. To, to get them to lift, yeah. you change a little bit on your hand. Yeah. Yeah. You change a little bit on your hand. Yeah. 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 Six. He's actually not only a bronze medalist, the tall man, even off. Not only uh, that, but he's won three international singles titles Service over. from five Seven, finals. 11. Yeah, but he, he was a very dangerous uh, uh, singles, player, singles player as well. And this is, we, we can see here, the, the return from, uh, from Mahue is, is just a little bit too high and, and then uh, uh, they just uh, kill it straight away with, with an easy push. So you need to play quality all the time. It's going right. That's very 14, good. A yeah, great seven. variation of serve here from Sosanov.
Yeah. I see exactly what you mean, because I thought it, it was indeed a nice serve, just wide of the tee bit uh, towards the forehand of Campbell. It was an excellent return, but what on earth do you do when Sozanov reads the return like that and plays a perfect winner? And it's, it's very difficult to put the return in and around his head with success, because he's very good at covering it. Uh, it has to go more towards his, his backhand or all the way uh, to Ivanov. Um, but that's, 16, that's one of the things seven. that we as coaches can say, but, but then the next question is if the players can do it uh, because of the, the quality from the opponent. Out. No, I went for the serve out wide once again, but short of that front service line. Yeah, that's good work. And a, a, a impressive rally here by the, by the Scottish pair. 16. Playing quality for a long time and, and high speed. And finally they can kill it with a, with a clever smash here from uh, Campbell. Smash. 10, yeah, and as soon as the Scottish players or the Scottish pair can can get the offense, then then uh, the rallies are much more even, on, and they have a much bigger bigger uh, chance of winning the rallies. Um, but the difficult part is to get out on top uh, of the service situation, as we spoke about in the beginning. Good cover oh. here again. Broken strings, I think, for Sozinov. 11, 16. Yeah, off it goes to change the racket. Stringers were telling me they've strung something like 700 rackets already. It's amazing, isn't it? There's a whole army of stringers here. Mark and Tim and all the lads working away. Like that backhand. 12, 16. That was a super shot. I like the way you move forward afterwards as well. Exactly, and that's what, what uh, was very impressive about them yesterday as well. Uh, and I think the Russians have lost the focus just slightly. They are not moving as well as they did in the beginning, and, and, and that leaves a little more room for, uh, for the Scottish players. So nice try here by Matthew, trying to block 17, it in front of Sosanov, which is 12. a very good idea. Yeah, I thought a couple of rallies ago when they played a drop shot in front of the big man, Ivanov, and he was slightly late on it. I thought, that's a very clever tactic. Try and make them move all oh, service forward. Forward. Try and make them move first service before forward. you start going for that winning smash. Yeah, exactly. 13-17. And it is indeed a good idea to play it uh, below the table in front of Ivanov. The problem is normally Sosanov is in front of him and you have to get past him first in yeah. order to be able to do yeah. that. Uh, no, I can see. Yeah, I understand that. 14, 17. Ah, that's a pity from a Scottish Save point of view. Do you know, just before the rally, I was going to say, 18, Lars, well, how do you 14. get Sozanov away from the net? Should you try a couple of little flicks from the onset of the rally? What did they do? Little flick serve. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, that is one of the things. But it's, it's not like, I mean, they can play the other rail around as well. And, and Sosonov yeah. has a quite big smash as well. Yeah. He plays a very good mix doubles too. So it's it's, mm. it's not like you have solved all, solved all the problems if you get no. him in the back. But, but uh, that is one of the things. And then uh, being a very, very... Uh, Competent left-right combination, then, uh, and Sosonov is very, very strong covering his forehand at the net. So, um, what uh, I used to tell my players is to is to uh, to play his backhand side a lot in in the front court. Oh, that's unbelievable! Twenty what reactions. Fourteen. And Back. virtually no backswing of that rally, racket from. And Vladimir Ivanov, perfect shot to bring up game point opportunities. Game. No, only needed the one. First game, one by Vladimir Ivanov, Ivan Sosunov, 21-14. Umpire just confirms 21-14. 15 minutes for that opening game. Когда начинаете играть медленно, а у вас шансы выравниваются, понимаете? То они ошибаются, то вы ошибаетесь. Поэтому я вас прошу, чуть-чуть побыстрее. Не засыпайте. Да? Вы в жесткости намного лучше. Это играет. Ария Маравова. Again, from below, take every time they try to play control and make errors. Yeah? The one thing is defensive, if you're on the... Uh, so if you're on the left box, you just defend straight. If you're on the right box, you try and cross away. Yeah? But everything's good when you can do it. Yeah! 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 Well, I didn't quite catch all of that, Lars, but there was something about uh, blocking straight or cross. Did you, did you get all of that? Yeah, but it, it was uh, exactly the same thing as I pointed out before, that, that uh, Andy Bauman wanted uh, Campbell to in from the defence to play towards his, uh, his backhand one, side uh, on the net. He just said it in different terms that... Uh, um, when you're in the right box, you have to cross. When you are uh, in the left box, you can you can play it straight. Uh, but the the outcome is the same. Second game. Oh. <laughs> almost ready. Love all. Play. Took that so early, the left-handed Ivan Sozanov. And notice the, the the serve from uh, from Ivanov. It's it's because he's so tall. It's almost going downwards all the way, and and it's hardly possible to come up and, and put it below the tape. One. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's the second service error from the Russian pair. to see how Sosanov is running across to cover his forehand and then Ivanov is, is stepping forward from uh, the backcourt uh, to cover his forehand side. Three, two. And these are typical set plays by a left and right-handed combination, aren't they? It is. And, and the advantage of a left-right-handed combination is that you can have a forehand side in, uh, in both sides, yes. which, which is... Uh, Impossible if you uh, if you were playing with the same hand. Yeah, nicely done. Three, oh. A uh, good turn. Martin. Of the hand Ready there, now. just in the last possible moment by. Uh, 
by McHugh, and, and that surprises us on the defense. Yeah, well played. But it seems like the Scottish pair right now are, are, are more prepared for um, what the Russians throw at them in, in the service situation. And, and uh, they're creating some better situations uh, right now. What, are they varying their returns more, or, or what do you mean by that, Lars? No, I, I mean they believe in what they've seen on the video, uh, and, and they go 100% for, for that. Um, And you need to do that because otherwise you have so few options on a on a quality serve like uh, like this one from even Yeah, exploiting the fact that Ivan Sozanov hit the deck. One stage there, just lost his balance on his defensive play. That was earlier on in the rally. It was and, and even though Martin Campbell doesn't shoot, for sure doesn't have the hardest or the most powerful smash on court, then Wait. then he's killing a lot of uh, yes. of shots from the backcourt because he's variating a lot and, and very accurate placement um, of his smashes. It's, so it's so nice to watch. Five. Oh. on the way out here today and, and he said he was very happy with the preparations for this uh, championships um, they, are, they are training together now in uh, in Moscow uh, where the Russians have made a, a national center uh, Seven, and six. one of the things they've done uh, is that, that they spend a week in Copenhagen training with the Danish team playing matches against the, the Danish men's doubles um, yeah. they went there with, the, with the, their coach Victor Malyutin Interesting. It's gone on well long. They also had success in the building up to these world championships because they won the Russian Grand Prix. That was their eighth final in ten years and their seventh title in total at their home event and third consecutive. Virtually made that <laughs> tournament their own. Yeah. <laughs> But it's always nice to have a win and and get in the winning mood and, and habit when you're coming into a major championship. Six. Exactly, and and it's nice that they um, that they keep going for it on on home soil and uh, and amazing that that uh, you can win a title seven times in a row. Was unlucky from the view because six. it was a nice idea yeah, and again a nice rally from the Scottish pair where they are really determined not to play the lift until it's it's absolutely necessary so um, they they follow the their plan uh, that they made with their coaches uh, before the match and, and that's nice oh, such 11, a good six. serve isn't it Interval. you're right <laughs> he is so tall I doubt if they even practice against a, a serve uh, that's coming at that angle, the, the Scottish pair. But it is the mid-game interval with the Russians. 11-6 up in the second game, having already won the first. Cop 
Coaches from Scotland, thank you. Eleven six. Well, you sort of feel that it's Great. now or never really for the home players. They've they've really got to start closing down this gap. Service over. They've got to take Seven. every opportunity Eleven. they possibly can. Yeah, but but honestly, I, I think they should continue what what they have done because it's uh, you you can't you can't play better than your abilities and and I think they have tried to follow the plan and they're doing it um, with uh, with great passion and and if they try to do more then uh, I'm afraid they will overdo it and and will actually uh, lose even bigger. Are trying to reach the last 16 service for call. of service fault called Patrick. It's the Patrick. second time he's been called a service fault. Patrick struck above the waist. Yeah, and it's Can't a pity for him because it was otherwise service. a good, uh, yeah. good variation. Uh, no, good flick. Shown, it was too high. Okay, so please come to me. Yeah, they know service what the arm signals are from the service judges. 12. No, eight. I don't disagree. I should just explain, though, that the waist in badminton is defined very differently to probably how you and I would define our waist, Lars, because it's below the lowest rib. In badminton terms, that is. I haven't, I haven't felt my lowest rib for years. <laughs> And this is definitely another thing they've talked about, that moving even of sideways in the backcourt. And, and this time they managed to get it past Sosono. Um, and, and then you can see that, that the Russians are, are vulnerable uh, when you can do that. Yeah. Well, I was going to say before that service fault was called, there's only been two other pairs from Scotland in the men's doubles who progressed through to last 16 of World Championships all beyond. Billy Gilliland and Dan Travers managed to do that three times. In fact, they went on to reach the quarter-final in so Calgary in 85, and then Dan Travers with 10. Kenny Middlemas in Jakarta in 1989. Yeah, it'd be quite an achievement. There's only three points in it. They'd have to believe. Low serve is short. 11, 14. That's his second service error. Yeah, and it's well left by Martin Campbell because it's, you have to go so hard on on the service we've talked about, and then it can actually be difficult to, to leave it when it's when it's too short. Service over. 15, 11. See that clearly, hit it on the frame of the racket. I don't like these returns of serve 16, from the Scottish pair. 11. They're right into the hitting zone of uh, Ivan uh, oh. Vladimir Ivanov. Look yeah, at that, exactly. again, very little yeah. racket head movement. And he's so strong in his off forearm, and that's why he can do it. Normally yeah. against a, a tall player like him, it's, it's not 17, a bad idea to hit the body, 11. but... but in this situation, he's so ready for uh, for that shot. So I totally agree with you. Mm. If, if you can uh, hit it, preferably a little bit softer, so it, it drops more and, and to the sides, uh, you need to move uh, the, the tall man. 18, 11. Something's not looking good for the home pair at the moment. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's the, there's the setup with the left and right hander. 11. The yeah. placement of the smash from Vladimir Ivanov. And the reply almost certainly coming back straight because he knew it hit a good shot. And that, of course, comes up to the forehand of his left-handed partner. Yeah, that's well played. Service over. 12, 19. have looked very impressive here today but the, if, if I have to point out one thing that, that they maybe hasn't done so well then it's that when they get the big leads then, then they sort of uh, take off the speed a little bit and uh, and that's dangerous um, and especially later on in, in the tournament uh, they can't afford to do that. Match point opportunities. here by, uh, by Martin Campbell. Place the, the block and, and follow up uh, in front of Sosanov. Yeah, well, just pr proving your point, Lars, that the Russians can play in the other formation with Sosanov at the back of the court, even off on the front. And that's how they finished the match off. 21-14, 21-14, so symmetry in the scoreline in a match one lasting by Vladimir 31 Ivanov, minutes. Ivan 21-14, 21-14. So safely through to the round of last 16, the former European champions from Russia. And I have to say they did look impressive, but uh, I think the Scottish pair can be very proud of themselves in this tournament they gave it their all and we saw real glimpses especially yesterday and today of what talents they are the Emirates Arena here in Glasgow. It was a very exciting day yesterday in Glasgow because the Queen's Baton Relay go towards the Commonwealth Games next year pass by here and in fact I was outside able to enjoy the spectacle of the Queen's Baton Relay and it really was a wonderful occasion. 
hundreds of children here and hundreds of children getting the opportunity to try out badminton as well. So our next match sees the number one seed, Someone Ho, up against Gurgeli Kraus of Hungary. So as far as the number one seed is concerned, this quite obviously the top quarter of the draw, because he's the number one seed. All other positions have been filled into the third round. Shrikanth Kidambi, who's been in three finals in his last three tournaments, winning his last two, he's still looking impressive. And what about Anna's Antonsen, the young Dane, the number 14 seed, beating Tommy Sugiato, who was a bronze medalist